we observed was uh, an urban area. We saw a lot of you know, destroyed homes. We met some survivors. We met survivors who made it out on time. We met people who endured the horrible conditions of the tornado right there, hunkered down in their bathroom. Uh, and you know, we met people who were looking for answers as to where their neighbors were. Uh, we know that in that area, almost a dozen people died. Now we shifted to the area of Dawson Springs, and uh, it's quite a different town. It's less urban, it's more rural. Uh, what I've read is that 75% of the town was completely wiped out, and that's exactly what it looked like. A lot of you know, trees that were uprooted. To me, after experiencing and witnessing what I did in Bowling Green, arriving at Dawson Springs was still so shocking. I just, I have no words to describe it. Complete loss. Um, it's an area that is, you know, quite poor, where people had already a lot of needs. We met a family that survived the tornado while hunkered down in their basement, holding on to their kids, protecting the kids with their bodies. And uh, mm -hmm. later on, we uh, also met the family of Oakland Coon, well, the grandmother of Oakland Coon, who is the two-month-old who died, and she also described what her son and her daughter-in-law went through to try and protect this baby who had made it um, and had to be taken back to the hospital and unfortunately last night died. It's just so incredibly heartbreaking, Lilia, and I wonder, um, you mentioned a couple of those stories. What else are you hearing from survivors in terms of assistance that they're receiving? What kind of help do people need most right now? You know, the most urgent thing is, of course, housing. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm cold. I mean, I've been cold yes. the whole time. And all I can think of is the amount of people over there in Bowling Springs, Springs where we were, around 6,000 people or just under 6,000 people were still without power. We met uh, a group of women yesterday who were going door to door to check on their neighbors and tell them, look, you need to get to safety. You need to find a shelter. Don't stay home. People didn't want to leave their homes, the ones who had still homes to, to stay in. Uh, and so there's there's so much need. There's also been uh, people staying at, I understand, national parks that are mm -hmm. open for victims. I haven't been there yet. I'm hoping to get there tonight to figure out, you know, what the situation is there. They're camping. Are there tents? I haven't really seen what I've seen, you know, weeks into a disaster before when it comes to, you know, wildfires and hurricanes, etc. I have seen some uh, FEMA workers today over at Dawson uh, Springs. Uh, we've seen a lot of local help. But the thing that really struck me me is the amount of volunteering, the amount of neighbors coming around. Today I met a group from uh, Patuka, which is a town that's quite you know nearby to uh, Dawson Springs and to here where we are in uh, Madisonville. Three, uh, two men and a woman who get together with a group of other friends, and they've been doing it for disasters and floods in the past, and they have a smoker. And they came to the house where we were interviewing this family that had lost everything mm -hmm. and offering barbecue. Uh, wow. So it's not just, you know, people offering water, but actual just people making food for their neighbors. I've heard from people who say, you know, I, I stayed at a shelter, now I'm staying at a hotel because somebody's paying for my hotel. Uh, I can't even tell you, I mean, the amount of crowdfunding that's going out there, the amount of messages that I get from people asking, hey, you know, can you connect me with that family? What's their GoFundMe? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because really here locally across the state, across the nation, uh, everybody really wants to help and they're coming together. Still, the federal assistance is needed. President Biden is going to be here on Wednesday touring uh, the areas that have been impacted. Uh, and, and as I have seen some military, I saw some, uh, I saw some Navy sailors yesterday, but I yet, I'm yet to see the presence of, for instance, you know, National Guard troops, or perhaps I saw a couple I couldn't tell because you're driving by. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there's a lot more help needed, especially when it comes to where these people are going to stay. I assume right. because of covering other uh, disasters that there might be you know, FEMA coming in, trailers, et cetera, but I haven't right. witnessed it yet. All right, Lilia Luciano. Lilia, thank you so much. Illinois was also one of the states devastated by tornadoes over the weekend. CBS News correspondent Mola Lenghi is in Edwardsville, where several people, people were killed inside an Amazon distribution facility. One person, an employee here, remains critically injured. <laughs> 